3 a.m. in Seattle. And you're listening to Night Call, a podcast for those strange days and lonely nights. With me, Molly Lambert, and my friends, Tess Lynch and Emily Yoshida. Today's episode of Night Call is brought to you by HelloFresh. We're in Seattle tonight to pour out a cappuccino in a large ceramic mug for John Mahoney. But honestly, Martin. Marty would never have. He a would cap- never drink. No, he would. He would drink a beer. He would pour he would a beer. Have like or a, a Valentine. What, what is he, he drink? Ba- Valentine. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, pouring out our Valentines for. It's a- John Mahoney, R.I.P. Is that one of those beers you have to like open with a knife? Probably. So real men use their teeth. Only ex cops <laughs> are allowed to drink it. <laughs> um, yeah, we lost John Mahoney this week. R.I.P. Um, he, you know, of course, played Martin Crane on Frasier, but was also just a standby dad of TV and cinema for many years, decades even. Moonstruck. Say oh, anything. I love Moonstruck. Say anything. He was also right on Cheers um, as a like piano player. I really? Think. Yeah. And then they Ooh. had to, they dropped details about him that they then had to, like, I guess, go back and kind of rewrite for, yeah, they, for Frasier. They retconned a couple Cheers things for Frasier, is what I've learned. Mm-hmm. I've is been that watching why he has a piano in his apartment? <laughs> Could be. Maybe he really played the piano. Emily, you posted a good meme that you made that was Fifty Shades of Crane that well, involved. Uh, let's let's uh, not dive right into crossovers. But no, yes. we're gonna we'll get there. Yeah, eventually. But doesn't he sexually play the piano in Fifty Shades of Grey? Is that why? Yes. Yeah, and he he sexually <laughs> plays the piano to I think purposefully comedic effect in this most recent one. But we'll get there. We'll get there to our our Seattle troubadours in their high-rise <laughs> apartments um, yeah what what uh what else do we want to say about john mahoney he's a good actor he started late in 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 life i i feel like it's very inspirational i think he didn't start acting until he was in his late 30s he had some completely other career that was not showbiz related before that uh and then you know felt a calling took some acting classes and you know was a successful working and uh uh, I think he did some theater, but he also did a lot of voice work for a long time. Uh, he was he had a, he um, did some voice work in Iron Giant, I remember, uh, <laughs> and also Ants, which I never saw, but I saw that when I looked at his Wikipedia. Uh, the the off brand Bugs Life, uh, and yeah, I just I think he was always such a uh, a reassuring presence, not just because of my own association with him with Fraser, but because he was just. He had such a good voice and like a good, a good dad like demeanor, whether he was on the cranky end or, or less cranky. But uh, Martin Crane's relationship with Eddie was one of the least obnoxious um, fictional, you know, person dog relationships. Oh I, they, you know, you, it's a fine line between that being charming and it being like a little twee, especially when you start thinking about dog actors. You know, but well, wasn't that dog an asshole? There were two dogs. There was Moose. one dog, and then it was taken. The job was taken over by his son, who I <laughs> whose name, and I'm not sure this is right, but I feel like I remember his son's name was Enzo, Enzo. and uh, he did not take to the to the actors. Uh, something I just learned is that the horse that played Mr. Ed when he died was replaced with a different horse. Uh, for nine years, and they just never told anybody. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so R.I.P. John Mahoney. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was it was a sad, a, a bittersweet note to begin Night Call on uh, with his passing. But we uh, we honor him here at at, the, at both uh, Night Call offices. So <laughs> yes, across coast to coast, coast to coast. Um, speaking. Of Seattle and luxury high rise apartments with views and uh, the erotic potential of piano playing. <laughs> <laughs> so much uh, potential. <laughs> so much potential. Uh, 
Emily, you saw the new Fifty Shades of Grey movie, Fifty Shades Freed. Fifty no, Shades Freed. Freed. Is um, it Freed? It's oh, Freed. Um, yes, I saw it uh, not even 24 hours ago. I saw it here at a, a press screening, um, and it will be out by the time our listeners hear this. So I'm going to go all in on spoilers. I do not care. And I know you guys haven't seen it, <laughs> but I said ahead of time, I was like, you needn't see it to talk oh, about it. Oh, I'm seeing it. it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I hadn't seen the second one, Confession, and it did not uh, prevent me from writing a review about it. Uh, I think that the mythology and continuity uh across these three films is probably the least important thing about them. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you all about the second one now because it's bananas. Well, no, because the second one has all the revelations about him being the his his biological mom being like a crack addicted prof- prostitute or something, right? Yeah, but it's really like brushed right past. It's like they set up this sort of, I think it's like a blackmail plot or something, right. but it's like it's like an anti-plot movie. It's constructed in the weirdest way. And well, after this, s- this one has well, that in common then. Yeah, it's like everything that you think because of the poster and like just the way it was marketed. Like there's this masquerade ball that is supposed to be like the crazy climax. But then it like happens for five seconds. It's like <laughs> one of the characters who I think causes conflict just like disappears and never returns to the movie. It's like um, it's like a weird it's like the room. Yeah, there was this, I was reading the Wikipedia summary just so that I would kind of have an idea of what happened. And there's like the funniest, like Wikipedia or whoever wrote this this entry is doing so much work for the movie to try to make it make sense. Uh, <laughs> right. So this is about the ending of, of Fifty Shades Darker. Um, as fireworks erupt in the sky. So so I guess Christian Christian Grey has a helicopter accident. And then because his life is in danger, Anastasia realizes that she cares about him and wants to marry him. Uh, And so so they propose whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, as fireworks erupt in the sky, Jack Hyde, who is like her other boss that I guess she like dumped. uh, Jack Hyde watches the festivities from afar and burns Christian's face through the gray family picture with the cigarette, (laughs) silently swearing revenge against silently swearing revenge against Christian and Anna parentheses he pre- <laughs> he presumably had a role in sabotaging Christian's helicopter <laughs> it's just wow like, they really really are trying trying to uh to clean up after the movie there no but- that's what I'm saying you should watch the second one because the what because the first one I think is good like I will go to bat for the first one because I it's think fun. that Sam Taylor Johnson did such a good job with it and made it so much better than it told than it needed to be because yeah. the book is so incredibly bad. Right. Like, and, she, well, they I, made Anastasia like really funny and identifiable, and Dakota Johnson is just so charming that even though the plot is ridiculous, you're still like, I want to just see her. Like, I just want to like follow her where, wherever, whatever kinky mischief she gets up to. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Wait, Emily, did you read did you read Fifty Shades? No, I didn't. I remember oh, this being man. an early thing oh, that man. we talked about because I, I I feel like you wrote something, Tess, about how um or maybe Molly wrote it, I can't remember, but about how it was one of these big um what would you call it? Uh, console killers, like what? Like you know, they have that phrase for video games, with like the game that makes you get the console. But it was like that for Kindle. Because oh, yeah, yeah because you didn't me. have that was Molly. Um, yeah, because the the cover of it is not identifiable, so people on the train can't see that you're watch or that you're reading Fifty Shades, which is brilliant. Um, of course, I totally. Yeah, I'm such a snoop. I read over everybody's shoulder. It is the <laughs> least sexy book anyone has ever written in their life. It's, we it's, re- about it's intensely unsexy. <laughs> we were trying to remember there are words and phrases that are repeated so uh, like I think one of them was damn. 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 <laughs> There's also, um, whenever she gets turned on, the fr- she says, uh, her inner goddess did the Roomba. Oh. <laughs> I think. It, is, it is written like a seventh grader who's never had sex or done anything. But has eavesdropped on someone <laughs> at some point and only yeah. gotten like 25%. <laughs> and it reads like fan fiction. Right. Um, which, which is it what is. it is. Um, and then the the movie was like I because I was like I don't even know how you could make a watchable movie out of this garbage. And then yeah, the movie was like incredibly decent, and uh, she's so great. 
he's such a lox. It's too bad. Yeah, I no, wish, uh, I somebody in my caught re- in my review of the um of the most recent film. I kind of posited that the film is really just all along. The appeal of the film is that you identify with this, you know, bright, charismatic, funny girl who is just like wrapping her life around this like void, this this moneyed void. Uh, in Christian Grey, and that there is something like you're like, why are you doing this? Like you should be with anybody else, but she keeps doing it. And there's something kind of like face palmy and identifiable <laughs> about that. Uh, yeah, she's very good, and she makes it watchable. Although <laughs> every time I see the trailer for the new one, I'm just like, man, get get your paycheck. And she's out. Else yeah. She's already yeah. done her Luca Guadagnino movie. She's got two tracks going right now. I, I'm not worried about her. Uh, now she can just Roomba on out of there. Yeah, <laughs> it's so it's so interesting though. So like, it, one of the controversies I think about the book too, but um, before the movies came out, was just that the way that it kind of <laughs> completely misapprehends. I think like what BDSM even is and 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 what draws people to it and that it's like somehow some kind of symptom of childhood trauma as opposed yeah, to just like a consensual thing that people do because it's fun. Uh, no, it's also written from this weird like moralistic point of view where it's like he, yeah, he's like a bad person for wanting to be into BDSM yeah. and she's like this good girl who would never do that and like you know she never does discover her like inner love of it she like hates it the whole time and wait so she hates that. it in the book because that's one of the fun things about the movies at least is that she seems to be really enjoying herself and there's this sequence in the most recent one that involves like a giant glass butt plug that um, of course we don't see in action, but like it's just alluded to, and then it's kind of cutting back. So it starts the scene; they're in the the playroom, and uh, and then it kind of cuts between her later in her office at work, kind of remembering it and like having this big goofy smile as she kind of flashes reminiscing back, reminiscing about the giant and, butt plug. Yeah, it's like kind of <laughs> sweet. I was like, oh, this is like somebody who's just like having a an active and sexy like like healthy sex life and uh and you know is, is satisfied with it and it didn't seem to have any of the shame or like this is naughty tone yeah, around well, it that the rest the of the weirdest does. thing about 50 shades darker is that it's like the most wholesome movie you've ever seen you know <laughs> Wait, what yeah you like you think it's gonna be like 50 shades like darker yes. and then it's like about like no, it's all about like monogamy leading to marriage and reproduction and like buying property. It's like the most regular stuff. Well, you this know? one like, is too. They get married at the beginning of it and at the end they are like sitting on the lawn with their bouncing babies. Like she has one baby and then she's pregnant with another one. It's just like this was what it was all leading to. Uh, um, and don't they buy like a giant real estate porn house? Yeah, they get this like old mansion and and this like a sexy architect. I, by by the way, I love that there's like a, a sexy architect character in this this movie who's like trying to get her to tear it down and build some modernist thing. And she's like, "No, I like the old house and has character." So, but that's like one scene at the beginning. It's in the trailer, uh, and it's like never revisited. Um, as as I think a lot of the film is not in the trailer. <laughs> Uh, it, no, it's completely ridiculous. I mean, the one thing, it kind of tries to do this thing of like, now that she's a married woman, she's going to be the dom. Uh, but I did appreciate ultimately that it didn't extend that into the bedroom. Like it wasn't like she suddenly wanted to be dominant because I just would feel ridiculous. And it was like nobody, I don't know. It didn't, it would feel disingenuous or something. Uh, and you know, at least could acknowledge that somebody could want to be like a career woman in the like bizarre flat way that she is a career woman in the Fifty Shades movie. And does she work in like she's like yeah? A what book, does she do? A publisher. <laughs> oh my god, this is the best part of the new movie. She gets promoted to fiction pub or fiction editor at this <laughs> at this publishing imprint that she works at. Um, and uh, because because Christian bought the company, I guess in the second the second movie uh and she's and then at one point she's sort of worried because she thinks oh i only got this job i only got promoted because you're you own the company and he's like no you you earned it with hard work and talent and everybody in the theater just 
burst out <laughs> laughing, <laughs> which is yeah. is too bad. He's psychotic is what makes it weird is yeah. that he's psychotic and he's treated as like the romantic hero. But then it's like his whole personality is like he has to surveil her at all times yeah. and like control every aspect of her life and it's like so buy the crazy. company that she works for. And, and the books, too, is about her being like, well, actually, like, that's the most romantic thing like anyone could do. Like, he loves me so much. He wants to possess everything yeah. about me. It's such a weird inverse of how I feel like any other writing I've ever read about like like the dynamic of a submissive dominant relationship is like it's just like that's right. that's like not sexy at all to have somebody who's like not gonna let you hang out with your friends which no, he doesn't but and- she also references like uh Wuthering Heights a bunch of times which I think is like, what she's <laughs> going for you yeah. know is yeah. like you know Heathcliff that it's like oh he's so bad but you like have to do it anyway and then you're in too deep but then but, it's like, of course, it has to end in marriage. Like, yeah, I don't know. You can have like, that story, oh, like, but then it's like, this is also going to be your husband. That's like, yeah. yeah. Well, that's so also weird. how it reads. Like, I mean, it's it is literally Twilight fan fiction originally. Yeah, that is kind of still how it reads. It's yeah, just like, all right, like a person who doesn't know anything about sex and is like basing all their ideas off movies and books like Wuthering Heights. Being, although, like. I don't think the Brontes had maybe had sex when they wrote those books. The way you phrased it, I was like, wait a second, what don't I know about the Bronte sisters? (laughs) But no, (laughs) it's hard to know if they had sex. I mean, what's interesting about like 50 Shades is yet we were talking um, before we started recording about how it is just so, so unsexy, but that so many people responded to it as if it was sexy. And then you, you, especially reading the book, you're just like, wow, it's like it's been vampired of all its sexiness. Right. Yeah. It's just it's just like kind of consumer symbols or something at this point. Yeah. Like it's just something so that somebody on like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills can be like, Oh, we're having a fifty shades party tonight. It's like it's like a meme. It's just a it's like a yeah, just like a uh trope or something that doesn't it's completely devoid of anything resembling sex or imagine if it had actually been sexy well the movies i mean the movies again are like better than the books because there's like moments where you're like oh they weren't that sexy no but there's that part in is it the first one where he like she like bites his toast or something where you're like that's weird i think well (laughs) can i tell you some a couple of things just isolated incidents please do and so um she gives him a haircut at one point that like it cuts to her starting to cut his hair and it's playing like the sexy, you know, neo soul music or whatever. Like that's the, 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 the dominant sound of, of the 50 shades movie, like an Adele cover of like feeling good or something like that. That's, the, <laughs> um, and look, those movies gave us the weekends worth it. I right. will never, I will never and, speak ill. And of love me, soundtracks. love me like you do, which they, they yeah, run those back. Are both good songs. Come on. Um, yeah, they run that back at the end with like a literal super cut of all the movies. Uh, it's, it's pretty <laughs> oh amazing. Uh, and maybe a string section. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's like an orchestral rendering of Love That's Me Like was, You Do. Of course it is. Um, um, Molly's writing the fourth right now. <laughs> <laughs> you could do fan fiction of fan fiction um, just for the strings. And uh, what else? Uh, there's a scene where they are in a kitchen in a vacation home and she's eating Ben and Jerry's and then um, they start to have, like, I guess, food sex with the ice cream and he appears to spoon a, uh, a, a, a dollop of it into her vagina. It's not also, <laughs> also not clear. And I was sitting next to Rachel Handler, my editor at, uh, at Vulture, who you, who you guys, uh, you guys know. And she, uh, pointed out that that was terrible for her pH. Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely awful. You're going to get an infection for sure. And also freezing cold. Yeah. Freezing no, cold. Not, not fun. What else? Uh, Oh yeah, but well, yeah, the ha- the haircut scene is like bizarrely sexy without being sexy at all. But they're just like plain seductive music while she's getting giving him a haircut, and I, I thought that was pretty great. And the best line of all in the whole thing is when she's being a successful career woman, like editor at the at the publishing company, and is like instructing a group of underlings and points to one of them and says, "Increase the font size by two points." And, that <laughs> <walks off. laughs> and uh, yeah. 
I, I was. That's what um, publishing is like. <laughs> well, publishing is 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 all about like her. I guess her boss, the guy who's like trying to have his revenge, is. Uh, she was sleeping with him in the second one, and I just feel like it all feels a little bit. Uh, you know, shitty media, media men. Uh, oh, yeah. Her, her one in the first one, he was like her evil publishing boss. Yeah. Who was like trying to get him, get her to sleep with him. Yeah. To like advance and she won't. She doesn't even sleep with him because the movies aren't that interesting. Wait, she doesn't um, sleep with him? No. Oh, it's I like so you, you have to watch the second one. You're missing so much context. The missing and link. Mythology. What I'm going to say about those movies is that Rita Ora is in them. Rita Ora is in two of them. <laughs> Uh, they sold me a lipstick because oh. uh, Dakota Johnson is so beautiful that I was like, I must know which lipstick she's wearing in the second one because it looked so good. And then I bought it. She's uh, so it great. Was, I can't it wait. Was to Ilya, see. an Ilya lipstick called Arabian Nights. It's like a very. <laughs> like, um, she's got like a very glossier type look. Like it's like a half tinted kind of. It's the dewy thing. Yeah. That's what I. Yeah, she looks very, uh, very aspirational in all those movies. Yeah, and that's part of it. It's just. It's. Uh, they're fine. They're enjoyable. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not. I. What I am more actually like opposed to in them, aside from whatever ridiculous sex stuff they get up to. Is just like the, the way that they feel dated even now is how mm -hmm. like um, like rich porn they are or like ba billionaire oh, yeah. porn they are porn yeah, they are. Yeah, it's yeah. just like very it feels very gossip girl in a very low rent way and it's just not at all interesting at all and it feels like yeah. it's cushion like we can get away with the sex stuff as long as we like really double triple reassure you that this guy is super rich because then it's like okay for him to do deviant sex stuff yeah he's right. like um, a, the youngest millionaire yeah. millionaire in seattle it's so it's so silly yeah because <laughs> the thing is like it's not even like an older man thing like you would think it yeah. would be it's like she's like 20 and he's like a 26 year old millionaire yeah <laughs> it's so weird the least Such fun 26 year old anyone ever met yeah uh he's like a tech billionaire but you know yeah there's like something interesting that could be in these movies about like oh you know she is so into him and he can buy her everything but it's like this empty life but they don't go there they're just like oh he, sh he can buy her everything and that's the best thing anyone yeah. could want so that's, like that's too the bad real king that is... let a man stalk you if he's gonna buy you a, a mansion yeah uh yeah yeah well well um, speaking of food play HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers your favorite step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. We've all tried HelloFresh here at Night Call. My favorite thing about it was not having to plan dinner, or worse, when you get in that thing where you cannot decide what takeout to get, so you just go back and forth between options and then you give up and eat bread at 2 in the morning. With HelloFresh, you get to try new recipes that aren't already in your repertoire, and everything is delivered to your door in recycl recyclable... Uh-oh. And insulated packaging. The recipes are designed to take about 30 minutes so you won't spend forever in the kitchen. And you can choose between three plans, classic, veggie, or family. So I got to try a little bit of HelloFresh this week. And um, I was very taken with the sizzling hoisin shrimp uh, dish that they sent over. So I, you know, you, you can say what your dietary restrictions are. So I don't eat dairy, but I do eat meat and seafood and there are plenty of options it turns out. Uh, and so I cooked up this, uh, really yummy kind of Chinese shrimp dish. It took like, yeah, it took about a half an hour. Um, I liked it. My fiance was happy and, um, it was the kind of thing that I would not necessarily normally cook. And now I feel like, uh, I, I, I feel like it's expanded my horizons. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice because it's like, you can kind of, you know, I don't have a lot of vegetarian recipes in the mix. And so I went with the veggie box and I was like, I never would have put these things together. And it turned out super good. And it's something that now I can like whip up on my own and get more vegetables into the mix and I'm not like stuck in that rut. Yeah. So it's, it ended up being kind of like a cool thing to try. Yeah. Um, if you would like to give it a try and receive 30% off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com and enter promo code call 30. 
So Fifty Shades of Grey is coming out. Um, what well, came out this Friday, and it's you know this uh, it's 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 Valentine's Day movie season. There are plenty of movies to to check out and 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 date options if you have some if you have a significant other you'd like to go see a picture show with. I think um, I would like to make the official night call Valentine's Day movie suggestion. Um, be a little movie called Double Lover. Uh, the new movie by Francois Ozon, he did probably his most famous film here is uh, Swimming Pool, which came out around like 2002 or something like that. Um, he's known for uh, erotic dramas, unconventional erotic dramas, and this is def- this definitely fits the bill. And I was telling Molly and Tess about it last night, even though they haven't seen it, because um, it, this might be a huge spoiler for it, but I feel like we must talk about it. It involves cannibal fetuses. Um, and Easiest way to get Molly and me to see a movie is yeah. to be like cannibal fetuses. <laughs> well, it's based on a novel by Joyce Carol Oates, which I'd you know, never heard of, but that's like not out of the realm of possibility. The novel's called The Lives of the Twins. I think it came out in like 1988 or 87 or something like that. Um, Peak Oates. Period. Yeah. Um, and I, so the story, as far as I can tell, has just been transposed to Paris instead of New York. And I won't get into it that much. It's a little bit twisty turny. Basically, this woman, uh, she starts seeing, uh, she's, she's, you know, she's depressed and she has these like stomach pains that she thinks are from stress. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's such an amazing movie. Uh, and she starts seeing a psychiatrist. And then ends up falling in love with him, falling in love with him, and they get married. Lots of inappropriate relationships in movies, uh, or like line crossing relationships, whether it be your boss or your psychiatrist. Um, so happy Valentine's Day, everybody! And this year of our Lord twenty eighteen. Um, so yeah, there's. Uh, but anyway, she starts seeing. Uh, she starts seeing her psychiatrist, and they 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 start living together. And then she discovers that he has a twin who's also a psychiatrist. And she thinks like, oh, her husband or her boyfriend must be hiding something. So she goes and she goes and makes an appointment with the uh, the twin psychiatrist and begins a relationship with him, too. Um, and he practices a very different type of psychiatry. And uh, there's just lots <laughs> what, of... What do you mean? Wait a second. <laughs> How different is this? A sexy Fraser? Yeah, <laughs> basically, it's about brother psych- brother shrinks, and this woman. This basically, she's Maris, uh, except she's not an heiress, uh, but she's caught between them. And um, I mean, his his methods involve like his office. His office basically looks like Christian Grey's apartment, and he has um, like a fur covered bed. Um, to do a uh, practical application in quotes uh, with her. Um, it's, it's a super wild movie. Uh, uh, I mean, where are the cannibal yeah, fetuses? I'm not getting a lot of the cannibal fetuses. It's, a, it's, it, it's, it's at the end, but I mean, all you need to know is that there are, there's a set of twins um, and there's a kind of like, like from, from the womb conflict between them. And then, she basically suspects from from the uh, beginning of the film that she has uh, she has a twin somewhere else, and at the end of the film, it is revealed where that twin is. Uh, is it inside, inside her? her stomach? It's inside her. Because <laughs> wait, so we were talking about this because um, one of my kids is left handed, and I. I am not left-handed, but I have a lot of family members who are, and I was Googling it, and one of the, it's it's been discredited, but a theory about left-handedness, because I guess it only occurs in like 10 to 12% of the population, mm-hmm. is that it is uh, you're, like an identical, you know, you're one of like two, tw- two twins, obviously, and then you kind of absorb your other twin and your mirror twins, yeah. so you absorb your right-handed twin. But it's been discredited, but I was like super feeling that. I was like, that's a very cool, yeah. dark origin story for you, this, but yeah, it's not true. This is a, well, that is explored in this film. Uh, nice. And I mean, I don't know if what happens when... Like with a cannibal fetus, if it, it does actually remain in the 
the kid. It's absorbed. It's absorbed, but it just becomes like another child. Like it doesn't, it's not like, it's not like a, um, what are they called? The, um, the, the, what, what are the, what's the name of those, um, tumors <laughs> that, have, that have teeth and hair? Teeth That's and where hair. I was just about to yeah. take. <laughs> yes. Um, um, there's an X-Files about this. There's yeah. an X-Files about everything, really. But I feel like, the, I feel like I knew you were going to say that she had a twin inside her before we got there because I feel like I've seen that twist in something else. Maybe it was just in that X-Files, but... Oh, yeah. It's a very... And the the way it's revealed in the film is very X-Files. Like, it's totally... I was on the edge of my seat just with, with the biggest dumb grin on my face because I was like, <laughs> show the baby! Show the baby! <laughs> <laughs> is it a Le French extremism? Um, It's not... It's not like um it's not as crazy as like a Gaspar Noé. There is definitely like yeah. a Gaspar Noé version of this. It feels much more like um Cronenbergian, I would say. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't really care for the French extremism. It's too extreme. No, it's too like oh, I'm being so extreme. Yeah, yeah. I can I can do that. Well, right? the other thing um, about this, and this is like our most this we're we're doing our our gynecological pod this 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 week. But uh, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day! Yeah, exactly. It starts with like a speculum eye view of her, <laughs> and then does of a, her vagina. Yes. Or okay, nice. Yeah. So literally, I was like, maybe she means it like you know, mm-hmm. oh this, yeah, through her, through her face. Lens. No, it's it yeah, also okay, involves literally. a haircut. It opens on a haircut as well. Haircuts and and orifices, and then haircuts um, and speculums. Yeah. I don't find haircuts sexy at all. And then um, it but, but it it goes from that shot. Do you like, like people to touch your head, Tess? Not particularly. We were just talking about ASMR. I'm sorry, I'm derailing. <laughs> I want to go back to the speculum. <laughs> we want to go back to the speculum. Yeah. Um, we back to the speculum. It goes from that shot, that super close up shot, to like cross fading a, a perfect match cut with her eye like lying on the side and a tear coming out of it. <laughs> Um, it sounds like a man made this movie. It totally. Oh, no. Oh, are you kidding me? Of course. Although the one um, thing that's kind of good about it is that like she's the person who's solving the mystery of these crazy men instead of like her being I mean she she does obviously have a problem but uh but it's mostly about how these guys are so fucked up because of their 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 twin relationship. Is uh, there a better is there is one like the good psychiatrist and the other one's the bad psychiatrist yes. or are they yes. both the bad Okay. Nice. Yeah. Although Guys. one of them, the one is like the good one in quotes. He's also not great. Anyway. Well, speaking of uh, reproductive anomalies. Yes. Um, there's a story this week about crawfish in Europe that have been taking over all the bodies of water everywhere. And apparently it's because people in Germany started raising crawfish as pets for a while and then got bored of it and put them in the water. Can you imagine how boring a pet crawfish would be? By the, <laughs> I mean, it's like, shocker, like, you, they're not that interesting. You know, there are people who have pet shrimps, and it seems like sort of... You I seem a like a person. Sh- I raised lobsters. Well, yeah, you have to have one of those really... People. They're a really pretty shrimp that you can have, but then they're also just like gray-colored shrimp, like a, yeah. lob- like a crayfish. Basically. You want those splashy pizzazzy? <laughs> well, shrimp. okay. I'm gonna sell you on crawfish now, cause <laughs> what these crawfish were doing is apparently reproducing just like crazy, and then they figured out it was because they were reproducing asexually. They were cloning. They're cloning mm. themselves, and they're all just females. And mm. they make like hundreds of eggs. Yeah, uh, that sounds like cool. our future. I mean, it's also crazy because. I guess it was just like a random mutation because there were these crawfish and then this one's the marbled crawfish and they're like pretty, you know, yeah. and they're all ladies and uh, and they don't have any like normally when there's a genetic mutation like that, there are drawbacks like biological drawbacks, but these seem healthy and they're it's just that they clone themselves and they reproduce like crazy and they're like taking over. Are they eating the other crawfish? Yeah, they're eating all the local crawfish and becoming the only kind. Wow. Yeah. Um, so you know what the, the answer to this is? A crawfish boil. <laughs> Wait, what? A crawfish what? A crawfish boil? Oh, yeah. So, to, to, you know. to solve their problem. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. it sounds like a model, though, for like a, like a post-male future also. That's what I'm saying. Also, just an all-female <laughs> society yeah. where everybody lays a million eggs. <laughs> it it can happen. That's what this proves. Yeah. 
Well, we could call the herd by doing an enormous crawfish boil. I know Molly's a big crawfish. I do. I yeah. like. I like I them. I can't get. I can't do it. I wish I could because well, it always looks so fan. fun. Yeah, it just it's well, like a big table full of bugs, and it's just. I am. I took a lot for me to get over my my uh, anti crustacean uh, fear, which I'm glad I did because I like crab is probably one of my favorite foods on the planet, but. I can't get over. I can't do the little head pop thing. It's so no. I mean, you know, arthropods are scary, but that's kind of what's cool about them is because you can lean into how scary they are and be like, "Wow, isn't it cool that these exist?" And I'm eating one, <laughs> like, yeah, eating an alien. The weird thing about eating crawfish, it's like this commitment because it it messes up your hands so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's crazy because you get all these slices all over your hands, and then you're like putting lemon on them to get the smell out and stuff. So you're just like, it's a very kind of like masochistic experience. I like how, even though they're so good. I like that. It feels like a weird, like prehistoric, like, Oh, I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm into it. No, I like that. I love the optics of a, of a crawfish boil. I just can't bring myself to eat it. I don't know. We're going to, we're going to, we'll, we'll get you. (laughs) <laughs> speaking we'll get of, you speaking of things that will get you oh yeah <laughs> that was a gr- I, i'm very excited for molly to talk about this i was gonna talk about also how crawfish look like spiders and that's what makes them scary they're related yeah oh. i mean they're underwater spiders but like what if spiders are delicious and we're just conditioned against wanting to eat well, them we're supposed to eat crickets yeah, they're, yeah 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 I mean, they're crabs are the best spiders. crabs are um, i would i would venture that crabs are better than lobster um, but I don't know. Maybe I haven't had a, a nice enough lobster. We're gonna, this yet. is going to be the next night call poll. Yeah, yeah this shit. Yeah. Oh, crabs we should, and lobster. We should bring up our 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 um our first poll, our poll poll. Oh yeah. Well, we'll get to that after we talk about the ancient. Spider. We need to scare them first. We need to. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Frame them. So, uh, if uh, the Cannibal Fetus movie is the official Valentine's Day movie of Night Call, then. This ancient spider that was just discovered is the valent our Valentine official Valentine <laughs> creature. It's our centerfold. It's our centerfold. It's, our Miss um, February. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was discovered in amber, uh, but there was a picture, a drawing of a ancient spider with a tail. Mm-hmm. That I sent to Tess and Emily last night. I, you know, Tess's first reaction was was going to be mine, honestly, which was like the illustration had it by this hole that freaked me out more than the tail did. There's a name for this phobia of it's um, like tryptophobia, perfect not tryptophobia, but like tripopophobia. Yeah, right. There's the pho- the phobia of holes. Yeah. Oh, or like uh, there's one them. of perfect circles that are that that is scary. And I had a little bit of this as a kid. I remember that there was some something on our windshield when I was a, a kid made when the car fogged up, it left these perfect little dots that gave me like they freaked me out so badly when I, and they were <laughs> they looked like that hole, like these perfect little things. And so when I that was what my eye went to, like it was a contest. It was like mm, spider with tail or or little hole. <laughs> It's the next BuzzFeed dress. It's like, what do you see? Do you see a freakish ancient spider with like a 10 foot long tail? Or do you see the hole that it's emerging from? Yeah, your fear of perfect circle sounds like some some Junji Ito stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There was this image that I saw on the internet many years ago that went around. That is where I learned about the thing that's the fear of little holes, um, which was it's like a lotus pod. You know, do you know what a lotus oh, seed pod yeah, looks yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks the like a shower thing. head, yeah. kind of. And somebody they have them in Echo, it. Echo Park Lake. Yeah. Someone photoshopped it onto a human breast so Ooh. that it looked like there was a breast that had just like all these holes in it. Yeah. And it was like the scariest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> uh. And even when it was like demystified as like, this is a Photoshop, it's not a real picture. It's like this thing. But it was just like. Somebody just started putting lotus pod like transposed on like human faces and things. It was the scariest body horror thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I feel like they can use we a link picture. to that. Yeah, we can all <laughs> we'll find link it. to well, it. I feel just like they use <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I feel like they use a photo like that um, in one of those um, what's it called? Like those ad oh, roll those things. ads that are like yeah, yeah this one like, weird trick or this one food you should never yeah. eat, and well, it's like a finger <laughs> with a, little, a bunch of little tiny holes in it. It's so scary. <laughs> 
I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, and the spider picture, every time I opened the text to you, I kept seeing the spider again and being like, oh, no. <laughs> hey, but I th- well, speaking of holes, can we talk about poles? Yes. <laughs> the pole pole? Perfect. That is the best transition we will ever have on this show. So, you're welcome. So, um, first of all, if you're not already, you should be following Night Call on Twitter at nightcallpod on twitter.com. Um, and uh, to kick things off on our first date, um, just sort of related to, I mean, related to our interests in general, but also related to um, the episode of Molly's Sleazy Friends that we did together um, that was posted basically right after, uh, I think the day after the first Night Call episode was published, and definitely go check that out. Um, we discussed... The poles. We've discussed uh, the North Pole and the South Pole, Antarctica and the Arctic, and which was our favorite, and the the, the pluses, the pros and cons of each. And um, we decided to put it to you, the listeners, to decide which pole is the best pole. And uh, we're at 697 votes right now. Um, so thank you all for letting your voice be heard. And the winner... It was a 55 to 45. The winner Whoa. is the South Pole. I knew it. <laughs> I, knew I knew it, it. too. I honestly, <laughs> the South Pole is just, it's a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves, everybody loves Antarctica. You're right about polar bears, though. Polar bears are cool. Polar bears Whatever. are great. Thank Arctic you. foxes and polar bears are just the best. Also, All animals are great, okay? Uh, but just because a bear is blonde, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. Um, the other, no better than a brown bear. The other, right. Um, She's right. The other Arctic animal that we should have brought up that um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention because all all Arctic animals are hardcore in some way or another in a way that a, a penguin cannot, can never approach. Penguins are too soft and cute. Um, the other is um, the Greenland shark. Y'all know about a Greenland shark? Go on. Oh, uh, you don't know about Greenland sharks? They can live to be up to like 800 <laughs> years old. They are like the oldest um, evolutionary form of shark that is still alive. So they look like they are made of rocks. They look like some first draft of a shark. Um, <laughs> oh, I love stuff like that, like the spider with a tail. Yes, exactly. And they um, they swim around in the dark um, for hundreds of years, and uh, they attract this this parasite, this worm that lives on their eyeball. So they're mostly blind throughout their lives because th- these worms live in their eyes, and they just chill in the dark and float around and look for food and like barely move. Um, and this is like an okay, underwater I'm showing tragedy. We're, we're looking at it now. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, you got to look at it. <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> it's the oldest vertebrate animal. Yeah. What's with its, why are its teeth that way? Um, Because it's a first draft. Like a total first draft. draft, Exactly. (laughs) They're figuring it out. No, it needs edits. Definitely (laughs) go go Google a picture of a Greenland shark. They're, um, they're really, they they look, if you've seen a dogfish, just imagine a dogfish, but really big and like all fucked up looking. And if you don't want to look at it now, don't worry, because it will be the last thing you see before (laughs) you die. (laughs) Uh, Um. Let's do some listener questions. Oh, yeah. We got some good ones. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys for for giving us your questions and thoughts. And as always, please call us at 1240-46-NIGHT if you would like to leave a question yourself. But we got some good ones, especially we were talking last week about um, Instagram, listening to us, and... uh, It's always good to know we're not alone on this this particular island. Um, should we roll the first one, I think, from Dylan? Our friend Dylan. Yeah. Hey, uh, I think I called the right number. This is Dylan. I'm leaving you a night call. Um, so, something about targeted ads. Uh, I said something about how I was very upset that there is a new Coke. Uh, it's Coke Zero, replacing the old perfect Coke Zero. And then I got an ad on Twitter that was like, Dylan. There's someone else in Austin, how does in Austin, uh, someone else in Austin named Chris or something who also didn't, uh, wasn't ready for the new Coke Zero to come out. But look at this video we made that convinced him. And that was when I threw my phone into the ocean. And uh, I'm calling you from a tin can. 
Uh, thanks for coming back, y'all. Bye. Oh well, I I appreciate this call because it's uh, it it combines two of my favorite things, which is uh, um, Instagram conspiracies or, or social media conspiracies and Coke Zero. Um, R.I.P. Actual Coke Zero. Because what did they do to Coke Zero? Well, yeah, how did they retool they it? They just re they kind of changed the formula and they called it and now it's called Coke Zero Sugar the way it's been in Europe and I think Japan for a while. Um and I never really liked Coke Zero. I couldn't put my finger on it. I never liked it in Europe that much. And now we just have European Coke Zero, I think. I'm I, this is it's the only soda I drink, and I'm very, I'm very, I can sense its its uh, its pe- peculiarities. So um, I, I'm, is it what is it stevia? Like what did they put in it? I don't Do you know? know? I'm not gonna I hate I don't, stevia. I'm never gonna no. If it was stevia, I would get a headache from it. Almost all oh, those artificial stevia. sweeteners give me a headache, but Coke Zero does not. Um, so I'm I'm in I'm in Dylan's boat. I was I was feeling the same way. I probably had a conversation like that about how I I didn't I didn't want the Coke Zero. Um, that's really weird though. I never got any of those ads, but the, so they made an ad, they made an ad that targeted him saying like, Hey, we heard that you're not into this. <laughs> hey, Dylan. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> also, creepy. We got another one, um, that was from our friend Douglas and it was a screenshot of an Instagram. I'll read it. He says, I've attached a screenshot of an Instagram ad uh, that I got over my phone, overheard my coworkers talk about sign language one day. I've also gotten ads related to things mentioned on podcasts I've listened to. So that's happened to us. That's happened to us too. Yeah. We're going to solve this, you guys. We're going to yeah. crack this code. Yeah. Um, your mic is always on, I think is the, yeah. the answer. Well, there's and a just way. To you all the time. I think there, there's a guide somewhere to like at least minimizing or, or changing the options so that you have less of that. Available. You can take away the permissions, but then you can't like make an Instagram video with sound if your right. microphone's turned off. Right. Um, That's the thing is you you assume that it's like when you give it when you grant a permission to your mic that you're like for videos and it's like for anything just taking that yeah. at, it, at your word. No wonder um, our batteries all run out so fast. They're like always mm-hmm. running the microphone. Well, at least they admitted to that too, being like, "Oh yeah, we do totally slow iPhones down when oh yeah uh, you upgrade the OS so that you'll have to buy that a new one." Was so, so dumb, but that was so gratifying to hear when that came out. I remember telling that. Yeah. I think I was home with my mom when that news came out, or I saw that like on on Twitter or whatever, and I like told her, I was like, "Mom, they just confirmed they are slowing down your phone." <laughs> um, I just well, there was also that great piece was it in the New York Times, and I think it was by John Herman about the the death of his like five-year-old ipad oh no did you guys read i didn't really sad and like point it was just about how it still functioned but it functioned so slowly that like you would have no idea looking at it it was like in pristine condition and it had been held by like you know his family members and people who had died and all this time had gone by but it showed no evidence of ever having <laughs> been a human possession and then it was just kind of like becoming obsolete and it you know just useless because the world was moving on with it, it was depressing but it wasn't then it was just it was just slowing down because apple needed it to slow down so that he'd have to buy another ipad right well exactly yeah exactly but also that it couldn't it couldn't update like it was yeah like apple was just kind of icing it out I mean, moving it into the assisted living. Molly, I know for until iPads. very recently was still rolling with a iPhone 4S or something. Is that what you had? Yes. Yeah, I just never update the OS though. Yeah. Well, that's what does it when you when you update the OS cuz uh um cuz David also still has a 4S, I think, and he updated he was forced to update at some point. And yeah, I was forced to update eventually on the phone I have now. And also I was like, okay, fine. Now I can use the avocado emoji. Yeah, <laughs> the emojis are really... The phone That's how they get you. Um, um, wait. Let's take another question. Okay, wait. I, so I really am eager to answer the one about mailing mushrooms. Yeah. But I'm not eager for us to give our opinions, but I did some research. Okay, well, well we don't know I'll, the answer. So let's, uh, let's read. I can read it if you want. Me- yeah, why don't you and we'll and all of this, of course you should never do anything illegal. It would be a mistake. Yeah, we'll preface all of this by um yeah. by saying that don't do, don't do anything illegal. Um all right. So, uh subject line. And this is from Jeff. It says uh best practices for mailing shrooms. 
Hello. Asking for a friend, of course, and a, and a bit time sensitive. But how stupid would it be to try to send magic mushrooms through the mail? I'm going camping later this month and want to imbibe, and the only way to do that so I, that I can think of is to mail them to the friend I'm meeting ahead of time. The friend in question doesn't have access herself, and God forbid we immerse uh, we mer- immerse ourselves in nature soberly. Parentheses. This is my favorite part of the email. This is not a phantom thread situation. You guys haven't seen phantom thread yet, but you'll appreciate it. No, I look that. forward to knowing what that means. Um, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. If you were in my position, how would you approach this dilemma? Thank you for your help with this very pressing matter. Um, well, I, I, I'll just give my two cents and then I'll, I'll, I'll let Tess address it because Tess did the research because she is the Gray Smith. Um, but <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yep. She does the research and she brings in notes. It's great. <laughs> it's I'm fantastic. a very busy woman. I have no time for that. <laughs> uh, I would say don't. That, and I'm not saying that to be a narc. I'm just saying that I would not if I were. You. Okay, now that Emily's outed herself as a narc. <laughs> so I would also, I would never be able to bring myself to do it. But if I were to bring myself to do it, then I would probably look at um, the all the mushroom boards available on the internet. So I did that for our friend. And wow. I found... From shroomery.org. <laughs> you can't imagine how long I had to search to find the answers your, to this your question. Suggested Just kidding. ads are going to be uh, really good for a long time. So excited. <laughs> um, so from shroomery.org. The question was, and I'm just going to, I don't know, like the, I, some of these I think were from like 2006. And so I'm just going to say like these people were like very lazy in the questioning and answering that they were doing on this message board, probably because they had just done some shrooms. Question, quote, well, what would be safe to, with an extra O, mail an eighth of shrooms in the mail? Best answer was it had like a Nabokov quality, like picnic lightning, peanut butter, comma, care package. The alternative suggested, think I'm going to put them in gel caps, then in some kind of container that used to have herbs in it with a note saying, here's the herbs your grandma wanted for her arthritis. It's foolproof. Ground up shrooms look like herbs. Or er, look like herbs for show. Sketchy answer would be powder them and put them in an envelope. They need a federal warrant to open those, but they can open a package more easily. And then there's a whole debate about first class mail versus private carrier. And then someone suggests to put them in chocolate and then also have some kind of a note along the lines of like, here's some delicious chocolate that has herbs in it. <laughs> And I was like, that sounds good. Wow. And then from Reddit's shrooms board, uh, yeah, they were just like, you know, put it in chocolate, put it in, make something chunky and chocolate. I would say the peanut butter would be, my, would be my um, go-to if I had to cho- choose any of those. And send I it do with like bread say, and jelly and stuff. <laughs> um, a friend of mine traveled cross country um, through states that are not 420 friendly. And my friend put um, marijuana in a plastic baggie and then put it in a shampoo bottle. And uh, there was a leak in the bag. And so my friend ended up smoking pot that was like, you know, suave enhanced. It was just a terrible experience, according to my friend. And it definitely I was like, friend. that's not the way I know my poor friend for him. My friend who's male and, and lives uses far suave. away from me. Uh, yeah, and uses suave. You know, a friend of mine transported mushrooms <laughs> across straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Pretty recently, pretty recently, for uh, she was coming. I, I won't give you any details. Um, but I don't remember if she mailed them or if she brought them like on her body through airport security, which is like even scarier seeming to me. But she did successfully transport them from one state to another with seemingly no problems. And I imagine lots of hippies have thought about this and have ideas. There was someone. Um, so apparently mushrooms are a very effective treatment for cluster headaches because I was I when I was Googling something that came up was like a cluster headaches forum. And they were like, you know, you if you really don't want to like do that, you should just buy mushroom spores and like grow your own. And I was just like, Guys, what? My, psychedelics are good for all kinds of things. But yes. the government invented them and then won't let people have them because yeah. they <laughs> no backseas government. Um, they're always like almost being brought into psychiatry 
and yeah. uh, probably not right now under this current administration, but yeah. they uh, they do have some purpose, you know, some some legit medicinal purposes yeah. besides making nature look even cooler than it already <laughs> is. <laughs> um, I want to say that my my real advice would be if you can get mushroom chocolates or put put it in chocolate or peanut butter, that seems probably like the best idea to transport it in food because like who could tell yeah. and you would obviously not want to use your real name or address as the <laughs> return <laughs> just in case i just think if that were if you were risking it against our advice yeah that that would be the footnote of the advice we also yeah i also knew someone whose mom went to jail for sending cocaine from australia so oh, yeah. so really don't do it you know just don't but <laughs> Maybe do chocolate if you're doing it, but don't do it. But don't do it. But don't if you're going to it. enjoy do nature, it in the house where we can see. Nature's let great. us know how it was too, or drive. Yeah, nature. Nature's also good. Nature and camping. You basically, is basically have to drive or enjoy nature. Like those are your choices. <laughs> I feel yeah. in life. Um, <laughs> good, drive and enjoy nature. Answer. Do we have any more questions today? I think that was well. We did have one, but I don't. We're not. I don't. Think, oh right, we're yeah. not going to answer that question. We also had Molly's uh, shoes are not a, for sale. A movie. <laughs> we also had a movie That's related question that we're dark. going to address. We'll next get to that next week. week. So yes. hang tight. Um, cool. Cool. Thanks for listening to Night Call. Oh yeah, and also if if you enjoy Night Call, would you please uh, rate, subscribe, and review? So that we can con we can continue our dominant rule of all those stars that we are so grateful to have, and be sure to follow us on every social media platform you can think of, even the ones that listen to you. We're on Twitter at Night Call Pod, we're on Instagram at Night Call Podcast, and we're on Facebook at Night Call Podcast as well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So um, follow us on any and all of them. Um, try to guess which of us is running each because one of us is running each of them. And that's about it this week. Uh, Happy Valentine's thank you, Day. Thank you to Audio Boom for hosting us. Thank you to our producer, Ben Hosley, for making us sound like angels. And yeah, we'll be back next week. See you then. <laughs>